We all know the Marvel Cinematic Universe has opened a Pandora's box for other studios to try out the Cinematic Universe idea, including Warner Bros. with both DC and Harry Potter, Universal tried it with the Monster Universe, and Sony are currently trying it with Spider-Man's side characters, and the MCU is still thriving to this day. Actually, speaking of Sony, at one point they did almost become successful in starting their own MCU with Spider-Man at the helm in the Amazing Spider-Man movies. These would go on to encompass spin-off movies including Venom, The Sinister Six, Aunt may and even go on to continue the mainline franchise with The Amazing Spider-Man 3 and 4. But those plans never went ahead since Sony agreed with Marvel to allow Spider-Man into the MCU. However, what if Spider-Man did have his own cinematic universe? And what would a Spider-Man cinematic universe even look like? Well, let's find out. First of all, I want to give you a shout out to my good friend Ryan for giving the idea for this video. And also, if you are interested in clothing based solely on superhero designs, then I give you I Am Superhero. It's a clothing brand that has designs based off the all your favorite superheroes from Spider-Man, Batman, and many more. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to go and check it out. With that being said, let's get straight into the video. Okay, so we're building a Spider-Man cinematic universe, which means one key thing. Everything has to revolve around Peter Parker, or at least it does in the beginning, before we set ourselves up for bigger and larger stories. So in this first part, I will be discussing the first phase and how I'd structure it. I like to call this first phase the high school phase, or the magic crime phase. Since this is the start of Peter's career as Spider-Man, he will be dealing with the very low level events and crimes. This phase will be in place to really open up the tin of worms, which is the magic crime family, and explore the deep depths that Spider-Man finds himself in when it comes to the underground crime of New York, whilst also setting up bigger stories for the future. The first film of the universe is called Spider-Man Year One. This will be a fairly simple film introducing us to the world, but I also don't want to overstuff it with stuff trying to set up different films in the universe at the same time. This film will introduce Peter in high school and will have him be 15 years old. However, the film won't deal with the origin, we will be thrown straight in with him being Spider-Man. This way we can spend more time with the other characters in the film, as well as Peter himself. This film's love interest will be Gwen Stacy, and both her and Harry Osborn will be the supporting characters in the film. Peter and Harry's friendship will be set up as already established, however, Gwen will be a student just moved from across the country, and both of them will get to know her. However, Peter will get closer to her than Harry because of their love for science. This will create a love triangle as Harry likes Gwen as well. Gwen doesn't end up with Peter though at the end of the film. The villain of the film will be Dr. Connors, aka the Lizard. Now I know it's pretty basic and we did see him in Tasm 1 already, but that's the idea of the first film, keeping it basic. We will also introduce both Norman Osborn and Wilson Fisk. These characters won't be front and centre but be more of the backdrop of the film, referring to them every once in a while, while we establish that they're both big figures of this universe. They will be rivals with one another as Norman will run Oscorp Industries and Fisk will run Fisk Enterprises. They will be competing with one another and this is a theme that will turn sour later on down the line. We will also have other minor and supporting characters in the film, such as Aunt May, Dr. Otto Octavius, who will be the school principal, Captain Stacy, Jean DeWolf, and J. Jonah Jameson with the Daily Bugle. Now moving on to the second film, which will be the sequel to the first Spider-Man and will be called Spider-Man Prestige, which will slip into Peter being around 16, 17 years old. This film will focus and will home in on the battle between Norman and Fisk in the first film, expanding on that rivalry. The film's main antagonist will be Wilson and Fisk with Norman almost as a second protagonist. Even though as the audience we know that Norman doesn't come with good intentions, the film will pit Fisk as the oppressor. The film will also feature more of Dr. Otto Octavius and since the departure of Dr. Connors, Otto will become a father-like figure for Peter. Peter will be slipping in his studies and since Spider-Man starts to take over his life, Otto will be the only one who doesn't give up on him because he sees the potential within Peter. The Enforcers will also make an appearance as the supervillains that Spider-Man will have to fight against in this film. The Enforcers will be a task force created by Fisk to try and take Norman out of the picture. Fisk will be the main villain of the film, but the Enforcers will be the punching bag for Spider-Man. However, one of the Enforcers will actually be Felicia Hardy, aka the Black Cat. Black Cat will be another character that is focused on in this movie as well. Black Cat will be given a criminal to hero story. Her father, Walter Hardy, will be dying and Black Cat will be working with Fisk to afford the medical bills. After her father dies, despite the funds from Fisk towards the end of the film, Spider-Man will be the one to tell her that with great power comes great responsibility, and in the final battle, she will turn on the Enforcers and help Spider-Man. There will also be a fling between Peter and Felicia in that she will 
will like the Spider-Man side of him, whereas Gwen will like the Peter side. This creates a dilemma with Peter as he starts to reject Gwen for Felicia as Spider-Man becomes a more prominent part of his life. This isn't because he doesn't like Gwen, and this film will make it very clear that Gwen is the one that he truly loves. But since he doesn't have much time for Gwen in the sense that he's always Spider-Man, which would be a main theme of this film, Peter trying to balance Spider-Man and the Peter Parker lifestyle, the relationship that he develops with Black Cat seems like an easier option at love and something that he desperately wants with Gwen. However, he can't get it because he's always Spider-Man. Peter really wants that relationship with Gwen, and that's why when Black Cat comes into the picture, the three of them end up having an indirect love triangle with one another. And since Peter isn't around much in this movie, Harry will make a move and ask Gwen to go out with him, and that will be successful as Gwen and Harry start to spend more time with one another, and Peter won't be there. So they will end up together by the end of the film, which is a consequence of Peter being Spider-Man, a massive theme you have to adapt if you're doing the Spider-Man character. This will therefore put attention on the Peter and Harry relationship as well, something that we'll return to later down the line. However, at the end of the film, Felicia will move away and start a new life somewhere else since she's ditched Fisk and her father has died. She has to go on the run as Fisk will come after her. Fisk won't go to prison, however, even after Spider-Man stops him and the Enforcers. This is because the amount of money that Fisk has automatically bails him out of jail. This film will also show to us that Fisk has way more control than we first previously thought of the underground. But then this leads us on to the third film in phase one, which is The Black Cat. This film will take place after the events of Spider-Man Prestige and will follow Felicia on her travels around the country. However, Fisk will have lost his best adversary, so will send none other than the master assassin Silver Sable after Black Cat. This movie in my timeline is to play on what the original cancelled movie Silver and Black could have been. A movie about Black Cat on the run and Silver Sable chasing her down. I can see this being an action-adventure type movie, going to all different locations and settings. This movie would also be about Felicia coming to terms with her father's death, and moving on from being a cat burglar since that's all she's known. She'll defeat Silver Sable and in the end, will decide that her moving away from New York was running from her problems, and decides that if she is to embrace the hero within her, she is to travel back to New York and take take Fisk down herself. The next and final film in the first phase will be a third Spider-Man film for the high school trilogy, which will be called Spider-Man Responsibility. This film will take place when Peter is 18 years old. Gwen and Harry will have been dating for a while, but it's clear as to when Peter had that thing with Felicia that Gwen doesn't really like Harry in that same way. She will be far more interested in Peter when they're all out together, and Harry will start to notice this and get jealous of them too. As they're getting older, it becomes clearer to Harry that his best friend is in love with his girlfriend. I'm pulling a few things from Spectacular Spider-Man on this one, as you can probably see. A big theme that I want to explore in this movie on the Peter side of things is what college everyone is going to go to. Like No Way Home, the trio here are all trying to get into the same college, which will be ESU. But who will be the villain of this film? Well, the time has come for Arthur Octavius to be the main villain, capping off the first high school trilogy in style. I see their relationship playing out how it did in Marvel Spider-Man PS4, how Peter has a lot of respect for Otto since he's a scientists like himself and vice versa. Otto and Peter will develop their relationship throughout the three films and Otto slowly becoming a more prominent character. Otto also being an aspiring scientist will get an offer from Oscorp that he can't refuse and therefore leaves the high school. Peter will still keep in touch with him though and will attend the presentation of his new mechanical arms. It turns out just like in the PS4 games, Otto's body is slowly degenerating and therefore he came up with the idea of the mechanical arms that can help him like an exosuit. Obviously, the experiment goes wrong. Otto goes evil and Spider-Man has to take down his mentor, a fight that will wrap up all three films quite well. After losing to Norman and Spider-Man in the last film, Fisk will take a back step here as well and will remain in the shadows. Since all the Black Cat stuff happened and everything in her film, Fisk will more or less transition over to being a Black Cat villain more than a Spider-Man villain, although we can see more from him in the future films to come. Norman, on the other hand, will be recovering from Fisk and the Enforcers. However, the Doc Ock situation gets tracked back to Oscorp. Oscorp is painted bad in the media and thus ruining Norman's business and his career as a scientist. This film, although only just will start to hint at Norman's downfall as Oscorp becomes severely affected from Otto's failed experiment. As you can see, we're pulling in many different storylines from all over the Spider-Man universe to start slowly sprinkling and incorporating into the franchise. Norman is going to be a big one as his downfall starts here. 
After everything that happens with Otto, it will be an emotional and a pure end to the trilogy. It was basic, unfiltered Spider-Man, but one that sets up the future for more great stories. The end of the film will see Peter leave high school with a thriving career as Spider-Man. At this point, Spider-Man is probably at the peak of his popularity, which you'll see when we get into the next phase will be a big part of that story as well. Peter and Gwen get accepted into ESU and Harry doesn't, which fuels his ever-growing anger that starts to slip through the cracks even more. That is it for the films, but there will be two shows that are a part of this first phase as well. The first one will be about the Magic Crime family set 10 years before Peter became Spider-Man, called The Underground. The best show I can compare this to is either Gotham or Peaky Blinders. It will follow the underground criminals of New York in their dodgy dealings and on the run from the police. We'd see George Stacy get recruited into the police force at a young age as he becomes a police officer. We'd see Wilson Fisk rise through the ranks as well, showing how he got to the criminal empire that he had in the present timeline. We'd also get introduced to a young Aaron Davis who would be dabbling with the Magia. This show will also introduce us to Walter Hardy and how he was the cat burglar before Felicia. We would also get a cameo from young Felicia as well, roping her story into the Fisk story, even further adding to their next encounter. The next TV show will be set even further in the past, but will be a show about Richard and Mary Parker as spies. And I can see it being a James Bond Mission Impossible style show. Yes, Peter's parents being spies isn't something that is very popular in the comics. And I know a lot of people don't really like this storyline. However, the plot is quite simple and I have to expand all kinds of stories to really make this universe feel like it has depth, like it's a cinematic universe since there are a lot less characters that we can use from the main Marvel universe. Richard and Mary would be employees at a young Oscorp Industries. We get to see a young Norman Osborn and see how he created Oscorp from the ground up. This will be almost an origin story as much for Norman as it is for the Richard and Mary story. Richard and Mary would work with another man known as Miles Warren, who would turn out to be the villain of the show. They would discover a genetic way to clone humans, which then later Richard and Mary find out Warren wanted to use this ability to unethically produce soldiers for the military, similar to something like the clones in Star Wars. Richard and Mary wouldn't agree with this saying that it's one thing to produce tech for the military but cloning isn't right. This would then lead to them destroying the information later for Warren to eventually hunt them down and in the end kill them. This is how Peter's parents would die and no Richard doesn't survive and come back like he did in Tasm 2. I also want to make it very clear that Richard had nothing to do with the creation of the spiders although we would see this referenced in the show giving us a slight inkling to how Peter and what Peter got bit by before the start of the first movie. But I also do want to make it clear that Richard had nothing to do with the production of the spiders how he did in Tasm 2 making Peter the quote unquote chosen one. I didn't really like that about Tasm 2 and it will not feature here either. And that is it for phase one of my Spider-Man cinematic universe. We now have two storylines set up for the future. One is the Magia crime family storyline, which after the Black Cat movie will follow Felicia finally trying to take out Fisk. And the second story will branch off the Miles Warren clone saga story, which if you guessed will be a big part of phase two for Spider-Man as well. Also going into the future, we will explore more of the Norman storyline, more of the Harry storyline, and it will be the college trilogy next as well. But also do remember that Peter is at the peak of his popularity at this point in the story as well. So that will be a big factor going into what the city thinks about him in the next trilogy. Something that I always like exploring within Spider-Man stories. Spider-Man's relationship with the city and the larger audience of the universe. And I'm excited to bring you phase two. And if you are as well, then make sure to hit a like on this video if you did enjoy. Make sure to tell me what you think in the comment section down below. And also if you are new around here and want to see phase two, then make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss it. And make sure to hit the bell so you do not miss it as soon as it goes up on the channel. Like I did say, if you are into superhero clothing that you can wear to the gym and out and about with your friends as well, then make sure to check out I Am Superhero for awesome products. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all in the next video. Take care and peace.